Thank you very much. Um, and so uh, the first question is going to go to Kamari Bright, uh, who is someone that is also passionate about mental health. You know, uh, when people like my brother Bobby is doing this work, it's not easy on him and his family. And, you know, uh, the way that you guys love him is part of the healing process. It's part of what gives him the energy and the zeal to keep going. But Kamari's passion is in, you know, uh, helping people find a balance, and she's passionate about speaking about that. So who do we have an extra microphone that Kamari could uh, uh, use? And the question for Kamari is really, you know, what's the importance... Um, what is the importance of mental health to activism and what are ways to find a balance and stay resilient? That's the question for Kamari Bright and you can ponder over it a while. We'll just pass this microphone to you. Um, Good evening. Um, so talking about mental health and activism, I think Sometimes we take for granted that mental health is something that's not physical. It's something that we can't see. And so we think it doesn't impact us in the same way as it would if you break your leg. Um, but thinking about activism and mental health, um, if you consider it like any other wound, you know that if you break your leg, you're going to the hospital. You're not going to try to treat that at home. But if you have a severe mental health issue, you have to treat it as severely as you would a physical issue because it will impact the rest of your life. It impacts the way that you move and the decisions you make and the way that you think. So when you think about it in that regard, if I'm not, if I'm thinking from a place of trauma that I never healed, then I start to act differently. And if I'm not acting to 100% to my best, then my activism and the work that I'm doing for myself and my people is not at 100% either. Um, so when we think about activism and mental health, it's kind of a crucial piece to make sure that we can get to our highest place as a people. Like we have to consider that piece of our health as non-negotiable. Thank you so much, Kamari. Now the next question is to Devis Chirwa. Um, you know, a lot of the time, African artists or African-American artists don't get uh, platforms like the ones you're working on. So the question is, how can we create our own company for the African people globally? You know, an autonomous company that creates a platform. For example, if Bobby Wine in the, is in the US, he could have been all over the media, but we don't have the capacity to do that, and you're already in there. How can we create our own thing? Uh, good question. It's good to see everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Your Excellence, I remember about seven years ago, we were sitting in my house, staring at the computer for a long time, and uh, you had this anointment in you that I felt like there was something greater than you just being an artist. How many of us believe that he's anointed? All right. <laughs> so I'm not the only one, Your Excellence. I just want to say Uganda has an opportunity to tell its own story for the first time. For so long, People have stayed under fear. And when a country does not give its people the opportunity to express themselves, what do we call that? It's dictatorship. And this is a time, Your Excellence, as you can see from your people that are in front of you, uh, this is a group of people who are courageous because of your courage. When you are incarcerated, we are all going through the same pain. I just want to say this. Before I answer the question, the hashtag for tonight is Bobby Wine Seattle. Don't forget that. There's a power. There's a power in how we package our own people. He has the strength, but we have to give back the strength that he needs through the way we tell our own stories. So we are here in the United States, but we have even much more so have the influence on how we tell the story than our brothers and sisters back home. So having said that, the way we package what he's running today is going to influence the rest of the world. His story is bigger than just Uganda. Even though I feel Ugandan, even though I'm Zambian, but I feel Ugandan because of how people embrace others from Uganda. And honestly speaking, 
I've had the opportunity to see most of you. Um, I've seen kids grow up to be mothers today, not because of time, but because of the close relationship that we keep as, as Ugandans and as Africans. So, Your Excellence, I'm here to tell you that your story is not just a Ugandan story, it's an African story. And Pan-Africanism has to start from Uganda because Uganda is setting an example for some of the countries in Africa that cannot tell their own story. So media plays a big role. I want to say to you in front of the cameras that if we need to put you in front of Trevor Noah, we have to do that. And not until we stand up as one people and give ourselves a platform for the world to hear our voices, I think it begins now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Davis. Now, um, I'll, I'll ask a quick question to Yadi, and then I have a few questions from Boniface Mwangi, who is my mentor and a great friend of Bobby. Um, so, Yadi, how can we use uh, art more for activism? Uh, that's a very good question. First, I'd like to say uh, thank you for being here, and you inspire me and a lot of other Africans, just not Ugandan only. Um, and I also am so proud to be here because I see how you guys look right now, and uh, it just shows that Af Africa has arrived, and young people are rising up to change the old uh, guard of Africa, which is basically selling out our own people. Um, as you guys already know, I'm from Ethiopia, and Ethiopia just, we went through a huge, huge change. Um, when I see that you guys are about to go to election and change the country, uh, there is a couple of things you can uh, learn or you can get uh, as an example from our country. Ethiopia, as you know, was not democratic. The last time they have election, the party won 100%. I'm not talking about 99%. 100% and the locals say even condoms have 99% of success. But the government said they won 100%. Um, what happened after that was people rise up. People just like you, they stand up and say, we can't take this anymore. But that change did not just come because we wished it. People like you and people activists who put their life in the front, and actually went to jail and get killed for it, actually changed. So my advice in the diaspora community is, yes, you cannot be on the streets of Kampala, um, is that the right city, uh, Miranda, um, or you cannot be beside every person who is struggling in there, but it can be there by helping them financially, you can there by helping them mentally, you can use your energy to stay with them, to stay the course, because life is a little bit hard in Africa. If your family get killed, you'll be demoralized. If your um, father went to jail, the kids cannot have enough to eat. So people from diaspora can help by giving out money. But now let me go back to the, the question, art, right? So um, when Ethiopia was rising up, there is this thing called Oromo protest. If you guys remember, there was a sign that we did like that. And I, I am the designer of that too. I helped all of that from here. and. All of the signs you see in, Afri in uh, Oromo protest that basically break the backbone of the government, uh, we did it here. And most of it we use through social media. So there are three things I want to leave to you. I know the answer to the question, we probably don't have time, but this is very important for you. First, you have social media. Social media gave people a right to express themselves. Don't use it to post the food you eat or don't use it to um, get back to a petty things, but use it to empower yourself. Use it to empower people that actually can get somewhere and take their country somewhere with it. So stay the course, use the same message, work with your party. But to do that, people have a very short memory span. They can't look at an image for a long time. They have to find something that touch their feeling. So use something that says Uganda to you. Use something that basically bring back the emotion. For example, the image uh, I'm seeing right now uh, of him doing that will say more than writing a whole lot of posts. So try to use art in order to inspire people to reach out and to stay the course because the struggle is bitter, but to get to the mountaintop, you have to pay the price, and the price is a struggle. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yadi, please give Bobby the microphone.
So, Bobby, these questions are from Boniface Mwangi. There are three questions. The first one, I would love for you to answer the third one, but just listen to all of them. Uh, what's your take on Pan-Africanism and neocolonialism? Neo and the second one is, uh, how can our African-American brother, brothers and sisters and black people in Europe and the rest of the diaspora support the struggle in Africa? And the third one is, how can we support your struggle to remove, to remove Museveni from power? Thank you, my brother. Uh -huh. And kindly deliver my greetings to my brother, Bonnie. Uh, although uh, you asked me to answer only the third question, I'm tempted to at least... I would love for you to answer all of them, but we are limited on time. But honestly, the most important part of this event is the video we are shooting tonight that is going to go on Diaspora Connect. And people like Boniface Mwangi are waiting for this content. So, my brother Julius, just allow Mr. President to answer these three questions so that we can distribute it online through uh, Boniface Mwangi's network and our global network because this is the village. It's a global village. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Even though he didn't, uh, even if he refused, I would actually insist and talk about Pan Africanism and neo colonialism. There's absolutely no way we can elude talking about Pan-Africanism when we are living it right here. Yeah. We all come from different parts of Africa that they love to call countries. I call them different territories. We are one country as Africa. Yeah. It's true, my brother. And just in that moment, it reminds me of the Elephant Party. It's an African-American group of youths that are actually training young African-Americans to defend themselves, training them how to use weapons and all of that. My brother, could you just stand up? We want to recognize you. Stand up for a second. He helped a lot with promoting today's event. He's a warrior. Bless up, bless up. So, um, Pan-Africanism is a promise by our founding fathers. People like the great Kwame Nkrumah, people like Julius Nyerere. People like Yoweri Museveni, although he later betrayed it, you know, this was a promise of our founding fathers. It was said that Africa is not free in bits. Africa can't be free until the whole of Africa is free. And that actually resonates with our other brothers and sisters in the diaspora. For example, in the 60s, Brother Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So Africa is one and we must always look out for each other. I come from Uganda, but the challenges that we go through in Uganda are similar challenges everywhere else. Yes, we know that some parts of Africa are better governed and they've given better results and we can always benchmark on them to see how best we can emancipate the parts where we are, the parts that are still under extreme oppression. Now, Having talked about Pan-Africanism and how it was found by our great uh, founding fathers, and yes, how it has been betrayed by the people of the same generation as Yoweri Museveni, because it's my most immediate example, I'll talk about neocolonialism. The people that were supposed to be the anchors of Pan-Africanism have actually sold us out. You notice that right now in Uganda, we are effectively being sold out. To the east. You have seen countries in Africa that are being taken over because they are being mortgaged to the highest bidder. That is neocolonialism in the present day. However, it must be a rude reminder to us, the grand sons and daughters of those founding fathers, to be the fulfillment because our grandfathers were, were the promise. I don't know what happened to our fathers, but we are the fathers of today, and we must be the fulfillment of that dream, which is possible, which must be achieved, which will be achieved, inshallah. Thank you very much.